Morning, James. Morning, David. Really good to talk to you. Um, wow, I've been watching these come in. It seems to have taken a very long time to get these results. I mean, what happened to the days of where you had instant results and it was very exciting? These are dripping in. So I'm just looking now. These are the latest as far as I can see. Labour 1026, Lib Dems 505, Conservatives down to 479. They've lost 448 councillors. Labour had a good night. You know, they won Redditch and Thurrock and Hartlepool and Rushmore as well. We were talking about Aldershot in that. Rishi Sunak saying, oh, actually, everything's fine. We got Ben Houch in there in Tees Valley. We don't know about Andy Street yet. No, you're quite right. And also, uh, we also want to keep an eye on that uh, London Merrill race, where I think a few MPs, Tory MPs, uh, more in hope than expectation, but have been eagerly waiting to see what happens there. But as you say, I mean, you know, you talk about Pinocchio a few minutes ago. I mean, these spinners out there could uh, give him a run for his money. Um, everyone's out there just trying to deliver their lines. I think in terms of how this plays, I think that... You know, it is not a complete disaster for the Conservatives. There is at least something they can say, but it is a pretty bad night for them. And I would say on these figures, in places like Worthing, in places like Rushmore, Labour is doing pretty well. And as a result, I would say that they're on track to do well in the election. And I think what's different than last year, David, and there's not been much movement in the last 12 months, but what's telling is that they've got a much better uh, vote concentration, vote dispersal machine right now. And so they're winning in the places they need to win to secure a general election majority. Can, can we just talk about Blackpool South? 26% mm -hmm. swing to Labour, Reform UK, uh, narrowly missing second place by 120 votes or thereabouts. That should be a big worry to Rishi Sunak. Absolutely. The big story of this election, I would say, is the collapse of the 2016 Leave voting Tory coalition. Uh, those are the voters most likely to abandon the Conservatives right now. Uh, we know about half the 2019 Tory vote uh, has gone either to Labour or to uh, reform. Uh, and so I think that this is a real, real concern, which is that a lot of Tories really bet the House on you know, going into the Brexit realignment, leaning into that. Uh, and yet, right now, what we see is that those voters look at things like net migration, uh, they look at the way in which the country's been governed for the first five years, they want to change, but if anything, it's got worse. And, and just in terms of Rishi Sunak, how safe is he? Because a lot of the papers this morning are saying the rebels kill plot to oust Rishi for now. They're off to the pub. So is the threat over? Uh, I think it's a little too early to tell. Um, I think that they want to see how the rest of the day's results go. As you say, I mean, the extraordinary fast is we're not going to expect some of these results until Sunday evening. Um, but I think that a lot of Tory MPs right now, for me, it's the silence which is telling. They're keeping their powder dry. They want to see how this plays out. They're not rushing to any snap judgments. Broadly, I think he's going to be OK because I think that these results can be spun in a certain way. You can talk about things like Harlow, for instance. You can uh, look at the West Mids and Tees Valley. Um, but I think that it's clearly just going to lead to the continuation of the circumstance, I'd say, where there's a lot of mumbling and grumbling. But I don't see a leadership contest at the current time this side of a general election. So, so just give... Um give our listeners and viewers a sense of when these election results might come in, particularly the London mayoral election. That's eagerly anticipated. I mean, Susan Hall, th the noises I'm hearing, as you say, there are some people who are quite confident she may well have pipped Sadiq Khan to the post. We know he's deeply unpopular, in not only in Conservative boroughs, the whole ULES thing, of course, Howard Cox may do very well out of that as well. What's your reading of that? Well, the striking thing is it's all about turnout. And when I was writing an article about it last month, one uh, GLA London Tory candidate said to me, if it gets more than 35%, he wins. If it gets less than 35%, she wins. And this is why turnout is so important, because we're seeing the early returns, David. We're seeing in a London, there's only low down turnouts around 31%. Mm. Out of London, some boroughs, there's 48%. And the kind of common belief is that the outer London boroughs, more affected by you, are less likely to vote for Sadiq Khan. And his core base in the kind of in a centre and east of London uh, have not turned out in the numbers that London Labour would like them to have done. So therefore, people are thinking that it's going to be closer than expected. Uh, as I say, I think Susan Hall's got a smaller voter coalition, but it's more mobilised, they're very angry, they want to go and turf out Sadiq Khan. Uh, Sadiq Khan's got a larger potential base, people like Greens, Lib Dems, Remainers, etc. But unless they've gone out and actually voted for him, he could be in real trouble. And of course, last time, under the old voting system, uh, Sadiq Khan came within five points of being beaten on the first round by Sean Bailey. This time there's a different voting system. Um, but it sounds like, from talking to some people, they expect uh, a similar margin or less. And what about the Muslim vote in London? Will it stay with Khan? 
I mean, this is the extraordinary thing, which is that, you know, talking to Poulter's a couple of weeks ago, they thought uh, he'd done enough because he moved quite quickly to uh, call for a Gaza ceasefire. He also didn't have a Jeremy Corbyn style independent or a kind of George Galloway style independent. But it looks like, I think early signs are that it might be slightly down. And we're seeing that elsewhere in the country in places like Oldham where Labour lost seats. I, I was just going to ask you about Oldham as well, because that goes into no overall control. How big a problem is Galloway to Labour? Uh, I think he is a real thorn in the side. I think that he is someone who turns up with his circus, his ability to campaign, a uh, certain charisma, and that really causes issues. And I think that this is going to be something that plays out within Labour, uh, I would say, for years to come. And there's also the second order consequences, of course, which is that suddenly people who are some of your leading front benches, people like Thangam Debenan, the most senior uh, Muslim in the Shadow Cabinet, Shadow Justice Secretary, are spending time dealing with these issues and talking about Gaza rather than leading on the front foot and trying to win over Tory voters. So I think that it's a real problem problem for them. Uh, I don't think it's going to stop them winning a majority, but it's something that they've got to constantly worry about, not least because you see things like Galloway popping up and saying, I'm going to go after Angela Rayner's seat, just 4,000 majority there in um, Ashton under Lyme. Uh, there could be issues there, but given that I think one in six of Rayner's voters are Muslim. And what did you make of this comment that Galloway said? He said he wants to do to Labour what Reform UK is doing to the Conservatives. I think that it's certainly something, it's a sore spot for Labour, I and mean, he certainly needs to kick away at it. Uh, I don't think it'll be as effective right now. Uh, Galloway, I think, is highly, is, is, it works in very sort of concentrated areas, you know, places where there is a significant Muslim population, where there are local grievances for him to stir up and fuster upon. Um, but Reform UK, to their credit, are doing much better elsewhere in national polls. So I think that uh, George Galloway would like to be as effective, perhaps, as Reform is the Tories, but uh, right now I can't see that happening.